Uh, this is your video homework for April 10th. Uh, today we're going to be discussing characteristics and misleading graphs. Uh, go ahead and write your name at the top of your paper so you can uh, keep it as notes. So, for first off, when you're looking at misleading graphs, you might notice that this misleading graph has a break in the axis, either x or y, has unequal intervals, it's representing only the top portion of that set, set and um, not starting at zero, comparing two sets of data with different skills, making pictures appear larger or smaller than others. And sometimes you see this, I guess, in marketing, if they're trying to make you see something that's not necessarily completely accurate, but um, you guys are going to be smart enough to know that you can do your research and see if it's a misleading graph or not. So we're going to be going and looking at some graphs ourselves. Um, go ahead at the bottom of this note page, just write, um, with each graph I show you, write graph one, two, three, four. I'll tell you what to number it as you go. You can just put it at the bottom under, under these, down there. And just scroll over. Just down here at the bottom, put number one, number two, and so on. Let's look at some graphs and see what we can, oops. See what we see when we look at these graphs. Okay, so this one is probably just came out of a magazine and they're doing a, a report on the shrinking family doctor practices. Okay, so it says the percent of doctors devoted solely to family practices. And you can see that this angry looking doctor guy is like really big at first and then it goes down in size. But that makes you think that maybe, yeah, the trend is decreasing, but actually you need to look at the, look at the numbers at the bottom and see how big of a difference it is. Let me scroll down a little so you can see that. These are actually the numbers you're looking at to show it's decreasing. This is 6,212, 6,694, and then is that 8,000? Uh, 8,000, zero. Okay, so that's about what it looks like. I don't know if y'all can see that. So you need to think to yourself, is that really a really big difference that they should be making this article about? Let's look and see what, what's wrong with this one. It says the intervals between the years and the graphic are not consistent. They may also be misleading us by showing us, but not showing us all the data. Some may also say that the size of the picture may be, may be misleading as well. And that's what I kind of saw at first, is the picture goes from very big to very small. But also, when you look at your numbers, you can see that it's actually not, especially between these two, it's actually not that big of a decrease in size for this family practice. Okay, guys, here is our next uh, graph that we're going to look at. It's the steady growth and predicted for fish, blah, blah, blah. But this is what this one we're going to be looking at, just this right here. We're going to see it says Freshwater Fish Market Corporation. So if we look down here, we'll see what we think is maybe skewed about this. It says the total sales pay, um, pay off to the fishermen and the profits that they're making from it. One thing that I noticed about this scale. <clears throat> it might be a little bit misleading, especially if they're talking about trying to make money and stuff, is this x-axis right here. Look at, look what might, um, might be like misconceived, what you can maybe think that is not correct about it. I can't speak, sorry guys. It starts at 89, it goes down to 86, 85, 84, all the way. So that could be something that can be misleading to people who are especially are trying to look at profits and different things that have to do with uh, the fish industry. So that one we're noticing that the x-axis scale is listed in this mini border. Alright guys, for this one we're looking at some box and whisker uh, plots, which to you they, I mean to me also, they look like they're two different, completely different data points. But actually, they had the exact same data in each of them. This is a good representation of skewed uh, data points for box and whisker plots because, as you can see, look at this x axis right here. All of these, they go on and on, are smaller than what this one is. So it ends up making this box and whisker plot look a lot smaller than this one. And so that is skewing the data. So you might want to, like, 
weight, so you might do this to make something like you lose more weight during this month or whatever, so they so they can show show you in a different way. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at this. We can show you down here. It says the box of what's your plot show the same data. The scale has changed to show the win uh, so the window shows how the plot box plots look different. So they just change the window. Okay, guys, um, for this next one, turn over the page uh, for the trends and correlations. For this one, guys, I want you to go ahead and make the, uh, make the graph that you see on this page yourself. You can use any intervals you want to on it, because um, we, did, we did this in class today, so you guys should be experts at it. So go ahead and pause this video, do that right now, and then we'll uh, show you what we got after. the video. Um, this is what I got when I made it. I know it might be a little bit different from yours, but if you got the same uh, same look of the graph, then you probably did it correct. Let's look at the question. A says, um, is there a positive, a negative, or nor no correlation between KWH used in the amount of electric in the amount of electricity bill? So what is this graph? Look back at your graph. What kind of correlation does this have? And guys, this is, on this graph, we have a positive correlation. And then it's going uh, up in a straight line. If it were to be a negative correlation, you have a graph that has a, that has a point going more than this kind of way. If you had no correlation, the, graph, the points on the graph would just be everywhere. You couldn't really give an exact answer. So for this one, it is a positive correlation. B, approximately how much would the bill be if a person used uh, 1,400 kWh? So that would be approximately 175. We know this because we can just look at our graph and kind of give a good estimate of what it would be between. So C, we're also approximating on this one um, how many kWh did a person use if their bill was, whoo, look at that bill. 250 uh, thousand, or is that a decimal? $250, I'm sorry guys. At first I thought it was like 250000 which is completely unreasonable. So that's what made me think that, that could not be right. So it's $250. And that approximation would be approximately 2,000 kWh. Again, the way, the way I did this was I went up and looked at about where would this electricity bill be when it's about 250, which would be about somewhere around up here. And I would look up and see that at two. And the data point that I had that was closest to that, it was all the way up here at this amount of So it had to be more than that. And that's how I got um, the 2000 kWh. D, predict how much the electricity bill will be if a person uses 2,500 kWh of electricity, uh, how how did you arrive at your prediction? So on this one, it's the way I came to this prediction is I located 2,500 on the horizontal axis, and I followed the trend, uh, the positive trend of that graph to see that it was approximately 325 as the electricity bill would be. So I guess it's $325. On E, just predict how many KWH a person would use if they had per electricity, if, I'm sorry, if a, a person would have used if her electricity bill was $300. How did you arrive at this prediction? And guys, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to look at our graph. We see that it's approximately 2400 Um, I located 300 on the vertical axis and also followed the trend. Guys, I hope this gave you a better idea uh, working with graphs and different ways that we can analyze them because in the business world, if you were to run a company someday, you'll have to know these kind of ways to do it to be able to uh, successfully manage your company. I hope you guys have a great night. I'll see you later and have a good day.